welcome to yet another edition of Morning News on TechMed TV with me, Nicole Maziwa, and my usual co-host. My name is Tonyo. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us live right here. Thank you so much, Tonyo, for being here. As usual, it's exciting. I, I, I don't know what wild cards you have for us today. I'm actually scared. You're equally forward. terrified. <laughs> but it's a good terror. You know, I also good get terror, surprised. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. So quickly, let's get into the headlines that we have for you today. So the first paper that we're going to look at is the Daily News. So the news, the headlines making the Daily News today, it says meltdown is ED, meltdown puts ED in a corner. Uh, Blawaya City Council fight, fights deepening. Those are the headlines from the daily news that we have there. And also today, leading from the Herald, we've got students grants facilities to set up committees. Also another story anchoring on the main newspaper on the Herald is China's Zim Tourism Hubs on the card. Another story as well running through on the Herald. We've got President congratulates Boris Johnson, of course, of the latest appointment as the Prime Minister. And another story is the Ninth Joint Commission set for Namibia. These are the top leading headlines that we've got today from the Herald. Back to you, Nico. And lastly, in the news day, we have We Need Dialogue, uh, BT says. Uh, Chiwenga Mohadi must explain electricity crisis. And lastly, Zimuto to unveil self through exhibition. So those were the news, uh, those were the headlines in the papers. So now for the news in detail. This is pretty exciting. I can't wait. Okay, so. Okay, so we cross over to the main papers that we have today so that we run with them, starting off from the daily news. I like how, you know, at times, what you say about the daily news, that uh -huh. it's usually sensational. Like, it's like a paper they, that always they, says... They, they, they do that at times, me, you know. Me, Here and there, me. you see them, you know, with a, with, a, with a very good headline, big, small headline, but of course, I think straight into the daily news. Uh, back to you, Nicole. Okay, so the daily news uh, says, government warns errant service stations. So this is a, a story by Blessing Mashaya from the daily news, and it reads... Energy Minister for Chinchasi has warned service stations, service stations that are charging fuel in United States dollars, saying the government will not hesitate to cancel their licenses. This comes as government once again hiked the prices of fuel, with analysts predicting that this would lead to further increase, increases in the cost of basic goods and and essential services. A liter of petrol now costs $7.74, up from $6.10, while diesel has been hiked to $7.19 from $5.54. Liquid petrol uh, LP gas now goes for $11.50 per kilogram. So that is what uh, Chassis is saying that. But then this has been what... They have always been saying that, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it's, it's, when, when prices go up, they are going to do something about it, or even those that are charging in U.S. dollars, you know, so. But I, I, I honestly think that's, like, like I said yesterday, I, I strongly feel that it, it was a good move, and it is still a good move to actually have the government, you know, allowing stations to sell in foreign currency, because then it makes it, it makes it very, very easy for these players to easily recuper recuperate and, and, and refuel, mm -hmm. instead of them then being stuck up with the bond notes and then finding a way of then converting them back so that they find the next consignment. I, I really don't know why we are fighting such an opportunity, especially when we're having serious fuel crisis in Zimbabwe. Let me take another story from the Daily News. It says EG reaches out to a new British leader. That's another story there. In the Daily News, it says President Emerson Nangagwa has congratulated incoming British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who is 57, and hopes that the con Conservative leader will forge closer uh, ties with Harare after two decades of frosty relations following the controversial land reform program which drove out white farmers uh, at the turn of the millennium. So that's the story they are running from the daily news uh, where we have got our Zimbabwean president congratulating uh, the newly uh, enacted, elected uh, Boris, uh, Boris Johnson as the, as the new uh, prime minister for the United Kingdom there. And I'm sure that's a very interesting development. And yes. he's hoping that probably relations are going to be, you know, 
Uh, yeah, definitely they're, they're going to be improved as, as, as a new uh, premier takes over. Uh, this one to you, Nicole. Okay, so still on daily news, it reads power outages hamper water supply. So we continue as we continue seeing more effects of power cuts. Power cuts of around 20 hours per day have contributed to the worsening of Harare's water situation, leaving many suburbs dry. Harare City Council Water Director Mabena Moyo said. Moyo told councillors that many areas have gone for more than one month without water because of the prolonged blackouts. Zimbabwe has been experiencing um, from 18 to 10 uh, hours of blackouts without electricity and of course here the, the director of water, water director from the city council is saying that uh, some of these areas cannot have water for so long due to um, power outages, which is rather sad, um, you know. But anyway, these are some of the consequences that uh, not having power brings. Mm. You know. I'm sure it's going to be a very tough time, you know, for various players, and we've got many people actually who can no longer operate uh, according to their own capacity uh, due to this. Uh, a serious power issue that that is really affecting I think uh, all industries across so this, this this is a very big problem that needs to be uh, fixed and solved you know with all the agents it, it deserves industries most most industries actually operating way below our capacity because of this problem another story the RG's office decentralizes uh, it is the Registrar General Office has pegged a site for a new registry office in the Sprouting Country Park suburb as part of a broader move to decentralize its services and ease pressure from every busy provincial regis registrar office. The new development will see such services as insurance of birth certificates, national identity documents, passports, barrier orders, death certificates, and marriage certificates being brought closer uh, to closer to the communities, uh, I'm sure, uh, around Bulawayo. This is a very interesting development that is happening, you know, for the Bulawayo community. Uh, the story also is that uh, marriage certificates being brought closer to about 25,000 residents mm -hmm. in the suburb of Kaukautri Park. So, yes, I'm, I'm sure this is a very uh, interesting development mm -hmm. that's happening to also have the government, you know, looking into decentralizing. Imagine each and every single time one needs to travel all the way to, to Arare or the next closest town just to have a birth certificate or an ID coming through. I, I, I strongly feel that uh, it was very, very much, you know, uh, too demanding for the citizens and w which is very unfair because, you know, we, we all need to get the services as and when we can and we need to, uh, to easily access them so that we, we can all get on with our lives so that we don't necessarily uh, get stuck up to these basics of uh, acquiring such papers and documents, you know. Nicole? Okay, so um, still on the Herald, it says Zim envoys hitchhike to work. That is uh, according to the Minister of uh, International Trade, that is uh, S.B. Moyo. So, and it reads, <coughs> Zimbabwean ambassadors are having to hitchhike to work while the state of the residential houses and offices are in deplorable uh, in deplorable state, Parliament has been told. This was disclosed disclosed by Foreign Affairs Minister Sposiso Moyo while giving oral evidence before the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Foreign Affairs chaired by Makonde National Assembly MP Kainis Paradza in Harare on Monday and I quote, our ambassadors <coughs> were in some cases having to hitchhike to work because we do not have vehicles for them. We have managed, we have since managed to purchase vehicles that they will use in their respective areas of uh, in their respective areas of jurisdiction. We have sent them money, which they will use to buy cars in the countries they operate. The conditions that they were operating under were such that some offices had no furniture at all. Close court. Mm. Uh -huh. So they they so they did receive the money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the ministry has sent the money there so that they do not hike, but rather, you know, drive their own cars. So um, these various ambassadors are in a, across, uh, but they, they were not really named for so that we know which, which ambassadors uh, exactly from which countries uh, were hitchhiking uh, to, to, to work. No, 
Of course, does this mean it's all of them? Does it mean it's some, some of them? Is it a which quarter? Exactly, you know? Yeah, uh, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't very, uh, it wasn't quite clear mm -hmm. to say which was exactly. Another story, the Shiri sued over GMB monopoly. Alan not MDC MP, Alan Markham has dragged the agriculture minister. Parents she pictured to the high court challenging the government's decision to give state run uh, GMB, the sole monopoly to buy and sell maize. The government, through statutory instrument 145 of 2019, recently declared that the maize controlled products are banning, in, banning individuals from trading in the cereal. Uh, so, Makam was also a philanthropist, uh, buys and sells uh, maize in various communities to support several charities in a joint application with the Clever Rupa. Rupa Rambana Pasi, a farmer based in Murewa in Mashallah and East Province. So this is, this is a legal challenge to the latest decision that has banned other players to actually buy and sell uh, maize, so to say. So it looks like these people they are legally challenging the constitutionality, the constitutionality of uh, such a such statutory instrument to say that, you know what, we are also in the business of buying and selling maize. Why would you want to give a monopoly to only uh, the, the GMB, uh, Nicole? So he's saying this is an interested party? Yes, definitely. And I'm mm -hmm. sure he, he, he has already declared interest uh, towards this action. I, I don't think he's, he's doing it uh, privately or nicotimously, but of course he, he is, like we've already uh, read. I, I think he's a piece of person. From the article, he says he's got philanthropic work that he's doing to supply uh, maize to various players, so to say. Okay, so uh, still in the same paper, power cuts paralyze hospital equipment. <clears throat> Relentless power cuts experienced across the country have hit hospitals hardest with patients left stranded and doctors failing to use medical equipment. This comes as doctors complained that patients in Zimbabwe state hospitals were also dying due to lack of medicine and equipment brought on by, ca by a cash crunch that has crippled the economy. President Emerson Munangagwa has... Okay, sorry, I will take that again. My apologies. President Emerson Munangagwa has, however, recently gave the Health and Child Care Ministry new medical equipment to help alleviate some of the challenges faced in the sector. Amid the President's efforts, doctors have complained that heavy power cuts, which are not sparing hospitals, are stopping them from utilizing the new equipment that was meant to improve their operations. So, you know, this power issue is really has to be dealt with as soon as yesterday, actually, because yeah. it cannot continue like this. Okay, fine, but maybe for hospitals, the government should have a plan B, a solid plan B, you know, mm -hmm. to say for this, whichever way, electricity is always going to be there in Definitely. those areas, in, in those sectors. And, yeah, as earlier we mentioned the water the water problem. Those are the areas that these are basic needs that people That each need. and every single human being really needs. And these are actually human rights and mm -hmm. we cannot afford to compromise on this. Still on the daily news we've got, we want a commission says uh, Blauai residents. So this is so that, that has been ongoing as far as Blauai is concerned. Uh, the story is that Blauai residents have continued to pile pressure on the council demanding that the council has stepped down and paved way for a commission. Residents accuse the latest crop of councillors of being corrupt and ignorant to the service delivery issues. To the service delivery issues. Last week, Blauai, I beg your pardon, I'll quickly check this uh, one more time again. Uh, the story about, about the Blauai, Blauai res residential, uh, residents rather, you know, appealing and um, making sure that they do find a commission running through with their, within their own constituents that they uh, quickly also on the same story I, I'm sure the, the, they're saying that instead of the, the MDC coming through to, to the, the local authorities rather coming through and, and dissolving the council they're saying they actually do demand uh, a, a, an independent commission so that it investigates and looks into the issues that these people are actually having uh, the story there from the daily news also reads. Uh, I think I'll have to move on to the next story so that we uh, also have an understanding of what other papers also are, are saying. So in between that moment in time, so we, we, we get to get through 
But do you remember understand. yesterday in the papers, it was also saying that it, they actually, the minister was the one who was saying that he wants to put a commission. Mm -hmm. So apparently it turns out the residents of Blawai actually agreeing with the minister. Well, of course, you said that the commission, you know, there's not, it was going to be, some, it was going to look like a, like a, the like a the tag of war yes, politically. Yes, the, the, the Minister of Local Authority uh -huh. are taking over uh, the, the same place. It is that last week, Lawa's Progressive Residents Association of, Bo of Bopra hosted a tension-filled gathering where various stakeholders seem to be in agreement over the expulsion of councillors. On Monday, the visibly angry residents met at large city hall for yet another emotional gathering where a number of issues were ranging from tribalism and corruption by councillors were, were highlighted. While various peers... Well, right, sorry. While various speakers expressed their feelings, the affirmative action group principal director Denzel Sita gave an overview on how corruption has been panning out unabated in the local authority today. So these are more and more concerns coming uh, from uh, the Blaue residents, say that they really need to have a, a strong relook into this issue so that at least it is uh, completely resolved. And now they want the whole councillors to be completely removed. Uh, from from them, so I, I don't know if you're voting for councillors a uh, few months down the line You want a complete overhaul as far as the whole council is concerned interesting times ahead indeed indeed. Yeah. Uh, moving on it reads Zimbabwe agricultural show dates changed So oh. this is another story that we have I understand that this has had a, had a press briefing yesterday to address this issue mm -hmm. So the Zimbabwe agricultural society ZAS has moved dates of this year's edition of its rebranded show to August 19 to August 19 to 24 the annual event was initially um, was initially meant to take place from August 26 to 31 at the exhibition grounds in Harare anxious masuka the ZAS chief executive said yesterday said yesterday the change of dates was done to accommodate calendars for both national and international stakeholders and i quote why i will note that some of our stakeholders might be affected by the change of date we emphasize that this is done to ensure the show experience is unforgettable transformational and impactful as we move and further as we move further and beyond the Harare Agricultural Show, he said yesterday. So that's another story that we have there. And um, of course, uh, it's, it's just a slight change, though. It's like from the 19, 19 to 24 and from 24 to 26, is it? But it's just like a very, very little change. There just trying to accommodate for all course. various stakeholders yeah. as far as uh, they are. You know, organization is concerned. I think it's good. The bigger, the better, because you know, agricultural show has been the same in the past. But they can change the, the the length of the days, but when they were allocating the days, it's still an August thing. I don't think it's a very big deal, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so to say. Of course. Uh, okay, so I I think just before we, we we continue with this news, we're going to take a quick short break. And then we'll be right back after this short break. We're going to be giving you more news in detail. Please stay tuned. And of course, remember to do send us comments. You can as well, if you're watching us live on, on Twitter, take at TechMec TV. We'll also get to read your comments loud live uh, right here. And also, I'm sure we're going to be taking calls through. So send through your comments, take at TechMec TV, and you'll be able to read your comments live. We'll be back after the short break.
Facebook page, we are live on Twitter, and we are also live on YouTube to all people who are watching, to all our fans who are actually following us through. And of course, like I've just said, remember to take us at TechMec TV and also send your comments so that we can read it loud live. Continuing with our news, we're going straight to the daily news. It says, we need to dialogue, says Beach. This is a story there that was, co that was quoting MDC Vice President uh, Tendai Beach. It reads, MDC Deputy President Tendai Beach has warned the country is facing imminent implosion due to President Emerson Nangagwa's administration's failure to deal with the with the deteriorating economic situation, it claimed that he, that the worsening situation showed Nangagwa's government has no clue of how to navigate out of the deepening crisis. The former finance minister, during the inclusive government, also suggested that this department of the central bank claiming it was the center of the economic crisis through failed currency reform. So that is the naive today, you know, him being him as usual, of course, you know, throwing. Uh, sulfur, fire, and anything else that you can think of except water onto the government. It wasn't sprinkling bottled water onto the government this time around. So that's pretty uh, for you. They're saying that there has to be serious and agent uh, conversations or talks, dialogues to have with the government so that Zimbabwe moves out of its uh, current economic stalemate that we are, we are currently facing uh, so that we can move on. Uh, that is, uh, I, I mean, it's also part of his suggestion today. But he says that central bank, uh, the RVZ, is part of the challenges that we are facing, and it needs to be completely. Uh, that needs to be dissolved. I, I really don't know, but he strongly says that it is part of the biggest problem that we are having, or maybe uh, it has to stop quasi uh, business, as it is uh, part of the reason that is also fueling inflation with, with many people, you know, feeding off the RVZ with the various um, funds that have been channeled to them, so to say, Nico. Um, moving on to another story in the news day, there it says, ED sits on corruption inquiry, a story by Bless Mshanga, and it reads, a month after the ZANU-PF League named alleged corrupt ZANU-PF bigwigs, ministers, government officials, and business people the matter seems to be slowly dying a natural death. President Emerson Nangagwa promised the ZANU-PF Politburo that he would name a commission to investigate the corruption allegations which fingered, among others, Party Secretary for Administration Oben Pofu and some ministers, among them Joram Gumbo, but nothing has happened yet on the ground. So that's a story... Um, um, uh, from the news day there. But we also understand that the Politburo is also sitting today. So we are hoping that he will be addressing um, some of these issues, you know, here and there, or maybe just to give us a glimpse of how oh, far... Oh, that is going to be an agenda, mm. and so it all depends. Is yes. that going to be an, an agenda? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. All, all you do, all we have to do is wait. The good thing is tomorrow we'll be telling you what the Politburo discussed and some of the things that... You know, comes out of that. Yeah, of course, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Another story there from the Daily News says S. B. Moyo was more humiliated than harmed. United Kingdom based Zimbabwean Joyce Mutenga Zanua, who was part of the protesters uh, that tormented Foreign Affairs Minister Sibusiso Moyo in this delegation, claims that, mini claims that minister was more humiliated than harmed. Speaking from the UK, Mutenga Zanua said that the president. Said, said the president Emerson Mnanga was late administration had failed at the nation because they were only they were the only ones enjoying at the expense of the ordinary citizens. So that's a, that's a comment today uh, coming uh, through uh, from uh, a UK-based uh, activists. Uh, you know, speaking on a on the recent assault that was done. I want to call it assault. Uh, uh, an incident rather, that really happened in UK where S.B. Moyo, after he left the church, um, uh, you know, there was a cause of Zimbabweans that then came to him and some of them chose to humiliate him and some of them were you not know, sprinkling water all over him, uh, which, of course involved in, which of course involves uh, assault and uh, to him, I'm, I'm sure, as a, as, a, as a delegate that was visiting uh, that country. So he does saying that there was more humiliation than an assault that was sent or felt by him, so to say. Nicole? Mental patients over detained at Chikurubi in Flondolozi. Flon, Flon yes. Okay. Yeah, that, so. That's a word. That, that's a word. That's a word for them. Flondolozi. Flon, 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 Flon,
Okay. I'm sure that's another correctional sentence for to say. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm also trying, I've never heard of your word. It's okay. my first time ever hearing that word. Yeah, so please forgive us on the pronunciation there. Mm -hmm. So close to half close to half of mentally ill inmates at Chikurubi maximum security and and Londolozi prisons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Prisons, Londolozi prisons the correctional areas. who are due for release are being detained longer than expected because the Health Tribunal Review Board has not been meeting to assess their incarceration. Acting Chairperson of the Parliament Portfolio Committee on Health and Child Care, Matthias Tongofa, revealed this yesterday during a meeting of the committee to discuss the mental health mental health issues and I quote during our visit to Chikurubi and Londolozi we were told that um, the outstanding cases of close to half mentally ill inmates that are required that required reviews from the board but were on hold because the health tribunal review had not met so this Actually, it goes on to say, of the few hundred inmates in prison, what is of concern is that most of these mental patients have been tried at Chikurubi because there are, n there are no mental health institutions where they can be tried. Oh, that's sad. Mm. That's re okay, that's sad. But it's, uh, okay, it's confusing. Not that it, but, okay, I don't know how to say this. Okay, fine. I believe that they have to be... Um, institutions to also assist mental patients who are prisoners you know they but then the government is does not have uh, enough facilities yeah. to mm -hmm. to make sure that the, that is uh, fully done and mm -hmm. you know it's done accordingly and they make uh, uh, standardized facilities to of take course. care of, of for this. everyone that are yeah. meant for even people that are not crazy yeah. It's not being called crazy, it's just called people with a mental situation. Johnson wins race for Britain's Prime Minister. That's another story as well coming through from the Daily News says a London. A Bo Boris Johnson yesterday became the new conservative leader winning the race to be the Britain to be Britain's Prime Minister. Uh, that's the story they're running in the Daily News. I'm sure uh, most papers also are having it. Just to, to quickly uh, sum into it, after exhausting all possible avenues to get a Brexit plan through Parliament, Theresa May stepped down as party leader on June 7, triggering a six-week leadership contest. Some 160,000 grassroots uh, Conservative Party members had the chance to choose their new leader. Johnson, who has vowed to take Britain out of the Europe and the Union, uh, out of out of the Europe and out of the European Union, I beg your pardon, out of the European Union on the October 31 deadline, with or without a deal, is set to march head on into a collision with Brussels, the, Brit the British Parliament, and the Tehran. So yeah, that's a very interesting development. They're happening uh, in, the, in the Britain, that's, uh, that's the United Kingdom, where we are now seeing uh, the new Premier taking over there after Theresa May. You know, Theresa May, she was quite strong in pushing she that. She was. Move. You know, we never, we ne I never thought that she was going to take it all the way through, but it looked like she, she, she sounded determined to make sure that she drives through and, and wins her way through. Unfortunately, you saw her also crying, mm -hmm. and when she was also resigning, she said, you know what, I've done my part for the best of the country. Mm -hmm. I think I've done my best. But unfortunately, the people had not allowed her, you know, to cut out with a deal and it seemed that getting a deal was almost close to impossible but unfortunately she had to leave she did the most respectable thing to at least quit but thank you so much Teresa. at least she did an honorable thing she left with pride but and from what um uh, from what the new uh, prime minister actually promises is that his his main focus is to fix you know the brexit that's his main focus he didn't say nothing about Zimbabwe in the, let's just be clear, not say anything. <laughs> Maybe he will say something, but then in his speech that he has delivered so far, he hasn't mentioned anything yet. Anyway, please do remember as I say this, because some of his days, or oh, very soon you will hear that he said that Zimbabwe, you know, they are fixing things in the country. Yeah. But anyway...
Uh, moving on to the news day, it says push for commission misguided. This is Mube. So for Mube to be saying this, I think he's in the right place to say this, mm -hmm. so people don't get really offended, you know, because he's also from Blauayo. You yeah. know, this Blauayo. Yeah, he, he actually yeah. represents that constituency. Exactly. Yeah. So for him to say that, it's a good thing. Okay, so let's hear what the story says. It says MDC Deputy President Welshman Mube has warned Blauayo residents and pressure groups against pushing for a government appointed commission to the run to run the city's affairs describing the move as misguided and a grave mistake Mube likened the frenzied push to dissolve the MDC controlled council over poor service delivery and reports of corruption to the 2017 unconstitutional throw for former president Robert Mugabe Blawayo city fathers have engaged in a nasty fight for the control of tender and procurement processes, among, uh, among other get-rich schemes, culminating in a failed bid by some councillors to suspend town clerk Christopher Dube. So this is where this, where, this is where all the drama started, mm. you know, on the suspension and the, um, the minister then said that he was going to appoint a commission and people said we want a commission and now Mube is saying that it's misguided you can't want a commission because you know it's more like a coup yeah, that's what he said it's more yeah. like a coup you can't just then saying. overthrow yeah, uh, a, 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 a legally elected council mm -hmm. in the name of uh, you know a, a new one that the, the government is just going to be hand picking so I strongly feel that uh, he's also right there and I think also it's very sad for the councillors, the Blauai based Gaga councillors, for them to be fighting over tender deals and all that. So now, now they, 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 they have to topple down each other only because they are not so happy mm -hmm. because X and Y is supposed to be using or getting a certain tender. So they are now fighting over and over again, which is very much deplorable. And I think it's a shame on the MDC Blauai Council, so to say. They are not supposed to be doing that. On a very interesting entertainment trip coming there from the news there, we've got Zimuto to unveil self through exhibition. If you don't know Zimuto, I'm sure you'd want to miss this exhibition that's going to be coming through. Because uh, Zimuto, she, 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 she's one a woman uh, in her own class and she feels that she has to express herself uh, as and when she fully wants to, using her own art. To her body, yeah, and her like, like how Emmanuel would say, Choco Nyo Nyo, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving on. Musician and dancer in by Zimuto picture there who drove social media into a meltdown last year when she started displaying a nudes on her timelines yesterday. Said she wanted people to understand her world of art through her. Uh, to a what? A virtue. A virtue concert, an art exhibition set for the venue in Avondale on Saturday. So is this Saturday the venue? Or despite public outcry over the controversial pictures, Zimuto is, is dug in, insist, insisting people needed to appreciate her art and her own beauty. So that's Zimuto there. She's not backing down. She's saying, you know what, guys? Let's meet this other day by the venue. If you don't know the place, it's a place that is in Avon, in Avenues, it's called the venue. So that's where she's going to be doing a little bit more on that. I, I, I'm sure I would want to know how much it's going to cost, because uh, it looks like we're actually slowly having our own Zodwa Avon today, uh, you know, through Avon by Zomuto. So she's making a jet this other day. If you need to see and understand more on what's coming through, she says, well, let's make a jet. Let's meet, uh, let's meet each other and, and, and get to fully express ourselves uh, through art, culture, culture, and uh, and art, and art, and body art. Yeah, uh, body art. That's a uh, very motto for you there, okay. Nicole. So, uh, so that was it from the news day. We're, yeah. we're done with the news day there. So we're just quickly going to go to the uh, to the Herald, and it reads: China Zim tourism hubs on the cards. Um, a story by Joseph Matzimure. Uh, and it reads, President Munangagwa yesterday urged Chinese investors to take advantage of available opportunities in the tourism sector, mainly in Mashonaland West and Matebeleland North provinces. He commended the commitment by Zhejiang province of China on the twining arrangement with the two 
provinces in its quest to turn them into tourism hubs. Speaking at the business forum between the Zimbabwe and Chinese business delegation in Harare yesterday, President Mnangagwa said the country has vast tourism opportunities ready to be explored. Um, the delegation was led by Ms. Ms. J. Wing, chair of the Chi Chinese People's political consultant. Like, uh, I can never do that. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to give it a very strong Chinese accent. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> so there was. Uh, so the delegation was led there by Miss J. It, it doesn't say, even say Cheng. It just says J. Win. Uh, oh, so it's Jehuin. Yeah, Jehuin, <laughs> like Tony said. So that's a story there on... Um, I, I'm, I'm sure the president was meeting this delegation, Chinese delegation yesterday. yesterday. Definitely, yeah. Yes, yeah. So they've course. tapped in the Twin Cities. So that's Beijing and... and, 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 and no, I don't know. Uh, which one from China? But it's Vic Falls and another China's uh -huh. tourism uh -huh. city. So they've met them now, the Twin Cities there, as the time to promote you know, tourism through uh, these, uh, these two countries. And uh, I'm sure they, they also signed some, some bilateral agreements yesterday. There. So yeah, I think it's a very interesting development. Let's see how this one will roll through as far as the agreement is concerned. Uh, on a very interesting note coming through from the community, government rolls out community uh, bakeries. That's a story there in the Herald. It reads that government is establishing community-led bakeries to increase production of confectionery products, including bread at affordable prices in rural areas. Pro the program is also expected to avail opportunities for economic empowerment for rural women, youths who will own and operate the bakeries while creating employment for other villages. Speaking at the launch of the program in Chitombo, yesterday met with representatives from 
Sorry, I'll take that again. President Mnangagwa yesterday met with representatives of teachers with special needs to have an appreciation of their plight in, in the discharge of their duties. The meeting was held at the initiation of the Progressive Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, PTUZ, who raised several challenges of teachers with disability. In an interview after the meeting at the President's Monomotaba offices, uh, PTUZ Secretary for Teachers with Disability, Mr. Abiyot Mora, described their meeting with the President as fruitful and productive. And I quote, we have a positive, fruitful and productive engagement with the President. The meeting was held at our request. The issues that we raised are transport, visual impairment, urbanism, and wheelchairs, among others. Other issues related to assistance on allowances that are taking long to be paid. The President directed that the Public Service Commission will look into it, said Mr. Moyer. So this was his response after they met the President. And of course, teachers, and teachers have a very, you know, have a very difficult task uh, of handling uh, children and teaching and doing stuff like that. Yeah, all the products of teachers. Yeah, of course, yeah, we, we are, we're, we're, exactly. And of course, taking into consideration that these teachers have special needs, which means that the government should also prioritize them um, equally. Another story they stretch into the health business says RBZ can do more to force rates down. Huh? It's a very interesting story. There. There's a significant headroom for the foreign exchange rates to come further down, thereby raining inflation and speculative prices in this. But only if the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe abides by government policy to direct up the export earnings, it's such terribly retained to the interbank market economy and say that's very true. The black market foreign exchange rates, which have been the primary drivers of galloping inflation in the country since September last year, fell below the official interbank exchange rate only. I beg your pardon. Fell below the official interbank exchange rate only last month after government banned the multi currency regime with effect from June the second. As I'm sure this is a very strong uh, business uh, point that uh, the herald is not there. You know, to say that the rates can honestly come down if government itself or the Reserve Bank avails foreign currency to banks. Well, that's really next thing. What we're seeing these days is we have got a lot of people who are just coming into the markets to buy and no one is coming into the market to sell. So this does not make any economic sense to then say that rates are going to go down when no one is selling. It's only a winning buyer situation. Mm -hmm. So we need to actually see the government itself coming through to buy. I don't know if we're going to be crossing over to the next comment so that we, we wrap it up and we'll have to take Twitter comments and Facebook comments from all of you who are actually watching us live, we need to cross over to you so that you also become part and parcel of this uh, this morning news bulletin that we're having uh, here. Um, okay, quickly coming to the comments. We really don't have a lot of comments today. Uh, Emmanuel, this is morning. Morning, Emmanuel. Um, as usual, Tafaz, morning, Emmanuel. Yes. Yeah, usual <laughs> top 10 way today. Um, Tafaz was, says, interesting, this, uh, Tony or Ritsito, so I think it's a comment. Now, the unfortunate thing is that we see some of these comments when we're way past. Way past, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. we'll try to read as it goes, you know. Mm -hmm. And Emmanuel says, economy can't be rigged. Um, so those are the comments that we have from Facebook. Um, we'll just, as we go on, I think we'll just quickly switch on to Twitter as well, if you can see the comments. But um, that's basically uh, what it's saying here. So I think we're going to take one more story in the business section um, on the Herald. And it says tobacco farmers pocket 460 US dollars. Tobacco farmers have been paid the equivalent of 460 million US dollars using interbank, interbank exchange rate after delivering 233.6 million kilograms of the golden leaf in the course of the current marketing season. Tobacco Industry and Marketing Board. Chief Executive Dr. Andrew Matibiri has said. Dr. Matibiri revealed this while giving an oral evidence on the state of tobacco industry before the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Lands, Agriculture and Rural Settlement, Water and Climate, chaired by Nemuzia Legislator, Justice Mayor Wajajena. Despite depressed deliveries compared to last year, which saw record delivery of 253 million kilograms, Dr. Matibidi said indications on the ground are that this year's target will, will still be realized 
and so far projections are that 245, 245 million kilograms will go under the hammer this year, which means that this is going to be a lot more than what they had this year, so, which is pretty, pretty awesome, and I hope that, well, they are saying that the tobacco farmers have been paid the equivalent of 460 million US dollars, so I'm hoping that the, 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 the tobacco farmers did get their USD, you know, because at some point it was, you're now getting paid in RTGS dollars, and at some point it was half US and half um, the RTGS, but, uh, and then now we're using the same dollar, so I'm, I'm not sure if it was completely in USD or it was a Zim dollar and then half Zim dollar or half, you know, US dollar. So I'm not sure about that. But the, the article doesn't really say um, how the payments were made. But it still says that they were given uh, money, their payments in US for That's very huge. You know, cause of course, Tobago is the largest exporter. It is the largest foreign currency in Zimbabwe. There. So one hundred sixty million at least going to the farmers. These are the people we have been toiling and working hard to make to make sure that at least uh, you know Zimbabweans and farmers and people who are producing are equally paid and they get what they deserve. So I think thumbs up uh, to to the four hundred sixty million that have been released to our farmers, to our tobacco farmers, those are the people who are actually making us earn a lot or not enough for the currency so that we can keep on going on and on. So I, I strongly feel that this is a very commendable move coming through from the government there. So I think that this is what we've got today from our, all our leading uh, headlines as far as the uh, newspapers are concerned. But I don't know if we, if we can cross over to our uh, press and also if we can cross over to our uh, online versions to see what's also trending uh, right there across all other papers. So back to you, Nico. Do you have any that is trending on social media or any that is trending? Uh, anyway, in any other uh, platform, sorry, okay. we have anything, yeah. All right, so what's trending on on Technomag, uh, on Technomag, oh, look at me here saying Technomag, on Technomag, um, uh, uh, which, you, which you can access on www.technomag.co.w, is the net one story, which is like my favorite, you know, because it's <laughs> trending. Okay, so I think everyone knows, if, you, if you're watching this and you're in Zimbabwe and you know, you haven't gotten your dollar uh, for one gig deal from Net One. You should, because it's it's amazing. It's perfect. Like a dollar, guys. What can you buy with a dollar that you can actually still uh, get your one gig courtesy, of course, of Net One? So that's the story that we have. So we have a comparison of the data, some of the data data prices that you can um, get from other mobile network operators uh, such as Ethernet and Telcel. Uh, so you can just make a comparison and you can see which one your pocket, you know, will, you know, will favor or something like that. And because, of course, your mix, people have been using your mix and people have really, really been complaining about your mix. You know, I'm yet to use so, that animal control mix. Yeah. I'm just being as frank as I can be. Mm -hmm. I've never used it. But I'm just wondering, why is it that I'm more complaining about your mix? That actually scares me off. You know, I need to actually find some time to get to get to your mix. But I understand... It's like just you, you are not so sure either you certain know, how much gig you're gonna get into exactly. that like, how yeah. much text, how uh -huh. much calling, uh -huh. but it just mixes up like exactly. your mix. Yeah. It's a mesh up. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the mesh up now, the uh, problem becomes it's you are given according to your usage. Uh -huh. So I can buy a, a, a gig for say for example for three dollars, but you can buy a gig for five dollars. How so? I have no so idea what, how, how I have how, no how idea they how, they, how that how you get more by using more, or you get less if you're using more. I, or I you're only going to get less because they've been using too much. Uh, I, I, I don't even know. I haven't used Geomix myself, but I feel like this is it's something that Ethernet has to rectify. Because what ends up happening is that I'll just tell you, give me, give me something, and I'll just send you your Geomix data, you know, something oh, like that. You okay. see, that's how people. So you can have a for your mix data? Yes, you can. Oh. Do not get any ideas, but yes, you can. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, you can actually you buy for that? other people. Oh. You can buy for other people in, in like, buy for other Who people. Who needs their own data? Does it expire in a day or so? It, you so? actually, it's like data. You buy for your for your 24 hours, for your, you know, yeah. Well, oh, so it is just mm -hmm. a timeline that exactly. it expires on the 24 exactly. hours. Yes. So if you know you put up an extra 7 for it that you're not going to use, you can just send them over to somebody else. No, you can't. Do that like Data transfer. You can't data transfer. I you can do that. No, I said you can just buy data for someone else. 
You can't data transfer. Please, I repeat, you can't data transfer. You do not get it. You know this. You know this is all possible. No, I've never used this animal called Joe Mix. Yeah, but then, our data, we were um, with the ICT Parliamentary Portfolio Committee. And they said, and you actually, can't MNOs, yeah, yes, you, you can't. can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. But you yes. can do ATM transfer. Yes. You can do any other kind uh -huh. of transfer, but not just other transfer. Yes. So yeah. So I thought, well, maybe your mix is breaking a barrier. Then I was like, oh, finally, you can actually do it as a transfer. I was about to break a story. Uh, Interesting. Uh, yeah. But you can then buy ATM using your your mix. Yeah, for someone else. Somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Of Our Twitter fans today, you are so quiet. You are not sending us anything, and you are about to call it a wrap. And we haven't really had anything coming through from our guys from Twitter. So I have refreshed too many times today. <laughs> I've been refreshing and refreshing. But of course, it is what it is. You guys have chosen to be spectators. And it's always a pleasure to have you live right here. Uh, I'm sure that's, that, that's all from me. I don't know, Nicole, if you've got anything else that you want to share with our fans, our viewers. Uh, so okay. I, I think that one. Briefly, do you hear anything about the teachers? I understand that they've got that poetry figure. What did they say? Did they respond to that issue? Uh, how are they taking at the four hundred dollar cushioning our allowance? As far as this development is concerned, as well, because I understand they've been given four hundred dollars cushioning allowance on top of their salaries. Have they taken this? Are we going on? Are they still going to be taking a strike? I think there's been a lot of talk around this. Of you course, over this. And I, I, I'm actually they are not happy. Mm -hmm. So let's maybe just quickly read through what okay. it says. Yeah, so this is daily news. Yes. So it says teachers mock four hundred dollar cushioning allowance. Teachers have poured scorn on the four hundred dollar uh, on the four hundred dollar cushioning allowance across the board, um, saying that, that saying that this move by the government um, okay, so let me reread again because I think I mixed up stuff there which doesn't make sense anyway. Uh, my apologies, so I'm taking it again. Teachers have poured scorn on the four hundred uh, cushioning allowance across the board offered to them by the government this month, describing it as money with a senior. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, money with a senior. Did just yeah. get it crafted there? <laughs> I know, they just did. Okay, so, um, and, and, uh, appearing before the public service uh, parliamentary portfolio committee yesterday, the country's biggest teachers union, the Zimbabwe uh, Zimta in Progress Teachers Union, PT UZ, called on Parliament to push the executive to pay them salaries uh, with the current cost of living is opposed to um, sorry is opposed to cushioning. cushioning. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. once the once off. And I, and so I what, what's what's with this cushioning? The once off. They're just getting four hundred dollars now this month, and that's it. Yeah, I so how do you cushion them for the next month? You don't. If they're just going to do a once off. I don't know. Money with the same. Oh, ah, yeah. interesting times coming through there. So I'm sure that that's, that's, that's what our teachers there had to say that yeah. we are not going to be taking any money yeah. with the same. Exactly. Cushioning allowance, okay. Yeah. Is, is the it's the first name. And, and the, the allowance, is allowance is like, allowance. Yeah, it's just want, <laughs> you just want a proper salary. Salad. Chanting. <laughs> salad. Nothing else. Salary, not not yes. money with the same. Uh -huh. uh, so. Interesting development. They're coming through for more teachers as five. Their money business is concerned, mm -hmm. but of course, we've had them to say no to money with the same. I don't know if it was anything else trending from our social media. We've got a video that has been trending uh, on our social media. This Chinese baby, trust me, she's the luckiest woman on earth. Let's get to watch this. Now we laugh about it because 
she's okay. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. Initially, we thought, oh my goodness, she's going to be crashed down. No. Because had that happened, she was going to have about two, four, six wheels all coming through to crash her down. Mm -hmm. But of course, fortunately, she was so lucky. And that did not happen to her. So of course, yes, she's changing. She's a lucky girl. Very yeah, lucky. Yeah. Luckiest person on the planet yeah, there. So I think that was, that's a wrap from us, uh, the Technic TV crew. Thank you so much for watching Morning News. My name is Nicole Matziwa, so from me, and oh, wait, wait a minute before I sign off. <laughs> yes, okay, so remember, you guys, to like our Twitter, yeah. uh -huh, follow us on Twitter, and also like our Facebook page, and subscribe on our YouTube, so that whenever we live... That button that you're watching right now, subscribe, exactly. just hit subscribe button, just that. Just that, yeah. so that you can be regulars, you know, and then we bring in news, and then you tell us what you think, and... You know, and tell us areas we can also improve, of course, because we do this for you and we bring this for you each and every single day. So thank you. Now I can safely sign off because my job here is done. Again, I'm Nicole Maltua, and for me and the crew behind the scenes, of course, I'll let my co-host officially sign off and then close. You know, we're signed off already. So yeah, we are done. We're done. It's been always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. Mm, I know. This next time. I know, of course. Of course, it's a good day and uh, enjoy, you know, enjoy your beautiful day and catch us again tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>